Hi, uh, welcome to our talk about GitLab and Flux. We're really excited about this. Um, so, so recently GitLab announced that they're going to be using Flux as their um, GitOps offering. So we're really excited. I'm Priyanka Ravi. Oh, well, I guess I'll go to the next slide. I'm Priyanka Ravi. I'm a developer experience engineer at Weaveworks. And I'm Victor Nod, a product manager at GitLab. And I've seen Priyanka's previous talk where she spoke about the two dogs that she has. So I put <laughs> my pets. So I took my pets on there as well to show that we are we are really in sync here. Okay. So I have one dog and two cats at home and you can see that one of our cats is just wants to play a pandemic with us there. Um, and yeah and you can reach us on, on the QR code there are lots of platforms also I guess and you can reach me through these approaches. So why are you happy about this? I am really excited. So I was at a company called State Farm before this, and we were um, a GitLab enterprise user. And so I have always been a really big fan of GitLab. I really miss it in my everyday life. But it's really cool because it's an end-to-end -end tool. It does everything like for you in one-stop shop. You can just basically go from just having code to all the way to production, the imagery, like, there's so many good things. I could go on and on again about it. it deploy apps, like it's, I mean, review apps, it's great. Um, and so when I saw this announcement, I was probably screaming, I think. My coworkers probably know I was really, really excited about it. And I was like, yay, I get to work with GitLab again. So I'm excited. Yeah, when I ran, we are super excited as well. Like. Actually, I was following the Flux V2 development since it started. And initially, we decided that we want to build our own thing. Then we had to deviate from that for various reasons, and we just fell behind in GitOps a lot. And when we evaluated Flux versus competitors, it was a pretty clear win that we want to take Flux for its uh, feature sets, code quality, integration possibilities, and all, all that stuff. And we are just super, super interested in that. We were both with the Flux open source community on the integration. Actually, what we are going to speak mostly about today is about that. But we work as well with WeWorks on, on how to integrate at a, at a higher level and, and then different levels as well. So it's, it's really uh, very exciting. And this is the top initiative in, in my team since the decision, actually. Like, no, three months before the decision already. I got here a little late. What's the announcement? Did you already make it? Yeah, in January 26, <laughs> I guess. The announcement is that GitLab will take Flux as the recommended GitOps solution, and we are integrating and um, it with GitLab to make it easier to use and, and, and nice to experience all together for Flux and GitLab users. Okay. Yeah. And so what, what, what does it mean, actually, this integration? That's what the talk is about. And as we were talking with plenty of GitLab users, we heard that the deployment and even the rollout management are actually not standalone tasks, but they are part of a whole delivery pipeline. And I think a lot of talks around here were about delivery pipelines and not just like, OK, let's deploy and then it's done. So it starts somewhere when you have an image that's built and it's in your uh, container registry, it's scanned, etc. But there are policy gates, there are compliance requirements, sometimes there are manual processes as well, and in the end you want to roll it out in front of your users. So I think that GitOps is an amazing approach for orchestrating the deployment part, but the whole process should handle more than that, actually. And if you use Crossplane or Terraform provider, or Terraform controller, sorry, uh, to have GitOps in the environment as well and infrastructure provisioning, you still need to solve many other issues and you likely want a pipeline, which will be one of the elements here. And this is part of the integration that we imagine. And in the next slides, I'm going to go a bit more deeper into each of these. So use OCI images, that's the first one. Uh, GitOps, I think, is just amazing as a concept. It simplifies many, many things for uh, cluster configuration because it's declarative fully by using Git as a single source of truth initially. But at the same time, when you merge your changes to your main branch, it will immediately pick up 
the changes there, and it makes it difficult to have the process that many enterprises actually want. And for many other reasons as well, when I heard from Flux maintainers and, and from experienced Flux users, is that the industry is moving towards OCI from the Git repository itself as an intermediary layer between your repo and the cluster. There are now, if you are not very familiar with this, don't get me wrong. It doesn't mean that GitOps is not GitOps. The, the single source of truth is Git. OCI is more as a, as a caching layer, one extra step there, but everything what's in Git, that should be reflected in the OCI. So don't add anything new there. And there are many reasons why this could be actually beneficial for you. One is that container registries were designed to serve images at scale, unlike Git repositories. You can support the release process because you can merge it to your main branch from a single merge request to all your environments, even if you want to. And you can still build the OCI images per environment when you want it to be released in that, deploy in that environment. Uh, you can, it supports logic in the pipeline. You can run customize or JSONnet, just build your final manifest there. A lot of dealer pipeline as a result. You can add additional scan scanning in the registry as well, and you can sign the artifact and have supply chain security there. And thankfully, Flux supports OCI images, so we are very happy with that. Both, it supports both as a Git resource and, I mean, not Git, Git resource, both as a manifest source or generic source and both for Helm repositories. And the next item is the pipeline integration. Um, we were asked actually to upload these slides to, to the schedule, and if you looked at them before, this photo wasn't part of the uploaded version because I took it this morning at Brandon Burns' keynote speech. This was his last slide where he actually wrote that the, the good approach is to have controllers and planners. And GitOps is the controller part, but we need the planner part the, that can orchestrate all of that. And this is what we mean by the pipeline integration as well. So we totally agree with him, and uh, that's what we want to achieve with GitLab. The idea is that we want Flux to be to look like a job in the CI pipeline. Not the CI pipeline, because it's not CI anymore, but in the GitLab pipeline. It wouldn't be there, so it would still happen outside of GitLab 100% using Flux, using GitOps. But to show it there that, yes, you have your pipeline, this is one of your environments, this is now the sync is happening there, it's done. We continue the same pipeline, you can run post-deployment steps, whatever you want, end-to-end -end tests, etc. You can deploy to the next one, and so on and so forth. So that's the idea here. Another thing we are already working on, which is kind of less fancy, but uh, could be very, very helpful and I think very valuable, is to simplify the setup. And with Flux, when I first used it, I was like, this is cool, but I, I had to create like five different tokens. And when I thought about it that, okay, I'm, I'm just testing it out with like two, three projects, but if I have it at scale at an enterprise, then I will have hundreds times five, and I rotate it regularly, so I don't want to do that. Uh, and with our previous approach, with the GitLab agent for Kubernetes, you had one token that you had to rotate, and that was all. And we want to keep the agent, actually. We are just keep adding the GitOps part from Flux there, not adding, that's not true. Uh, giving away our part, so dropping that part and using Flux together with the agent, and the agent can manage these tokens. So we can keep the token management at the GitLab level, keep the authorization, authentication logic at the GitLab level, create the Kubernetes secrets, the tokens, from GitLab, put it in the cluster, and you just have to point Flux to those tokens, and then GitLab will show you even compliance report, it can rotate it for you, and all of that. So this way, you can have a central place for managing your tokens and get reports about your tokens and actually uh, benefit from all the Flux amazingness there that requires these tokens. And at the same time, it allows as well things because here there's one uh, weird token which is not a Kubernetes secret, but the other way around, it's for GitLab to notify Flux that a thing should happen, which is just a token. 
And basically, this is something that, GitLab, that the GitLab solution already knows. So we know when the co co code changes. We know about pipelines. And we can easily, even today, notify our cluster side components. So we just have to tie the uh, strings together that our cluster side component notifies Flux immediately without any token, for example. And finally, we are building a UI for Flux into GitLab as well. Uh, at KubeCon, I've heard plenty of people coming to me that like, will there be a UI because I can't convince the managers to pick Flux because it doesn't have a UI? And yes, there will be a UI. Actually, we demoed it uh, back in March. The demo doesn't contain Flux in itself because it was started before the decision was made. But uh, as you can see on, on this screenshot, we are actually designed it for Flux as well. There are the sync states, if I remember well. And uh, I hope to release it soon. And on that note, we prepared for one question that you don't have to ask, uh, which is when does all of this thing happen? And um, we are working on everything that I spoke about for like two months now, some of them even longer than that. Actually, there's one that is more recent. And uh, if everything goes well, we will have an experimental version of the OCI and pipeline integration in a few days, actually in two weeks, on May 22nd. It will be experimental, but if everything goes well, we, we will have it already. Um, I think that we will have a beta version out of the <clears throat> automatically notify Flux when a change happened in one month from now. And the visualization, it's a huge task, but behind the feature flag, it might be out in a month as well. So it's really, these are, these are the top items on, for our team. And uh, we are pushing it very, very hard to, to get something out in front of you and, and then get your feedback on that and uh, so we can improve it further. And before, I give the floor to you to ask questions. One question is, does this make you happy? <laughs> if you have any questions, yeah. <clears throat> uh, yes, it makes me happy. <laughs> For sure. Um, and my I guess one, I've forgotten my question. It just makes me so happy. I've completely. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. Well, I guess I'll, oh yes. Do you want beta testers? And what's, what is your, I mean, clearly you put out beta releases, right? Um, or different, you know, sort of RCs at some point. Is there, kind of because it's such a tight priority for you, is there a focused initiative on gathering feedback from folks? And if so, how yep. do you want that to happen? Very, very good question. Unfortunately, GitLab doesn't really have beta releases. So we have this very strict release schedule on the 22nd. On, on gitlab.com, we release more often and, and sooner, but even that is not that you have to sign up for getting that or anything like that. It just arrives earlier. Um, how we gathered feedback was mostly through interviews and, and, and sharing the designs and stuff like that. Uh, the way why I even mentioned that we, what, from the OCI and PowerPoint integration, we imagined as an experiment because what I, what I asked from my developers that like, just don't test it. Create it as a separate uh, container that you can, we documented how to, how to run it in the pipeline and just put it out there as quickly as we can. So that's, that's how we try to, to get early feedback. Why did you choose Flux over its peers? Um, there, there were several reasons for that. Um, from the feature side, I, I already told this to some people here in the past days, is that <clears throat> I think what a very rare feature of Flux as a software product is that it was rewritten from scratch, but it has all the learnings from VWorks from Flux V1. And that's a huge thing. Uh, when you compare it with the other uh, solutions, what we have seen that 
They either lack some features, or you could see that they are not that new. Like, they have years of heritage, and, and the code quality was not something that GitLab wanted to recommend for its users, and after, get those users come to GitLab with support requests. Uh, we used previously other tools uh, at lower level integrations, and we moved away from, from those because of, of uh, code quality and dependencies required there. Does this answer your question? So I actually have two questions. One is uh, I'm trying to figure out what's so special about the OCI part in this case. So is this not something that GitLab's content registry supported so far? It, it, I think it, it already did. It does. It's, yeah. it's very funny, actually. Uh, it does support OCI, and I had to ask our package team, who manages our container registry, whether we support OCI. <laughs> <clears throat> and because I was like, it seems to me that we do, but it's it's never do it's nowhere documented. <laughs> and then I asked them that please document it. And now on the on the container registry documentation, there's a line that says that we support OCI. But yeah. it's not it's not compliant yet. Um, we don't know if we would pass the compliance check right now or not, because nobody ever run it. But so it's very close to being compliant as far as I know. So is, is this a custom implementation when they use some of the open source? Uh, I think we built it on top of some open source library, but I'm not 100% sure okay. it's not my area. I okay. think Victor also mentioned it because of the fact that Flux uses OCI, OCI as well. Flux can do OCI deployments. So yeah. I think that's why he wanted to like highlight that that's something yeah. cool that so, they can work with. It really works, and actually, like we, yeah. it didn't work with. So if you use the Flux CLI to push images to the GitLab OCI registry, in this case, the container registry, it didn't work uh, because of the uh, custom media types that Flux used with that, and that was fixed the previous milestone, like a month ago, but we missed the deadline to get it into release post because it was like it was reported one week before the release cutoff. And it's so high priority that the package team immediately started to work on it so that we, we get support to that. OK, cool. And uh, second question, well, maybe it's, maybe it's rather feedback than a question. That you mentioned that uh, GitLab would actually notify Flux about an image being pushed. And I guess that means GitLab would actually have to have access to the cluster. Yes. Um, is that something uh, that has to go through the internet? Do we have some special solution for it? Because coming from an enterprise pers perspective, I know that that wouldn't That's fly for question. us. So. Yes. Um, so what we have this GitLab agent for Kubernetes, what you can see here, it's, it has actually two components, agent K and CAS. This is what we had even before, just Flux wasn't there. So there, there, it had a GitOps module that we are getting rid of, and we want to use Flux instead. This is our long, long-term plan. Uh, today, there are some limitations that even in, in the Flux side that won't allow this. But the basic idea is that you see that bidirectional streaming channel between Agent K and CAS. That is actually set up by Agent K. So it's the cluster reaches out to, to GitLab, and you manage Agent K with Airbuck. It's up to you what it what it's allowed to do. But after that, as it's bidirectional, actually we can reach out from GitLab to show you the UI. And the nice thing is with the CI that actually it integrates the, the runners as well in GitLab. So we can reach out from GitLab runners from a CI job in a push-based fashion if you want to the cluster as well even today. And that's pretty cool that we, we just combine the pull and push-based into a single solution and soon into a single pipeline as well. And we, we got around like the, the security parts um, because State Farm's also really highly audited by having like our own on-prem. So we were using enterprise. So because it was already deployed within our own clusters, it was more secure <laughs> to add that connection. <laughs> yeah, you're yeah. not giving like someone else access. Yeah. So but the, the very, very long-term thing that today is not supported yet architecturally from, from the Flux side even, is that what we would like to achieve is that the, that Flux today basically reaches out to GitLab in a separate channel to retrieve, to pull the manifest. And on the long term, we would like to use the agent K connection for that as well, because that way 
we can allow rate limiting the main GitLab entry point and all of that, and it's, it will just scale better and, and be more stable. Okay, thank you. Does that mean that, I'm just thinking two things. One is uh, Flux already has essentially an endpoint for webhooks, and that's how Flux does it. You're not giving, in, in that realm, you're not giving your, this actually will be a question, trust me. <laughs> you're not giving your, the keys to your kingdom to your CI system. You're, you're really just giving them the ability to say, hey, check it, check it again. And they come, come and check and they say, oh, yes, in fact, there is a change, so I'm gonna pull that. Oh, yeah, I know. I'm familiar with that. Oh, okay, cool. So, so my question based on this is, is that, um, I know with, with, uh, with Agent K generally, with or without the GitOps side of things, um, can do pull and push uh, based uh, deployments. Yeah. But when you're using it with, with a pull only based system like Flux, are you seeing Agent K as kind of a source controller caching layer in that way? And is it, is it a similar thing where this push is really just kind of a ping to say, hey, check me again? Right now, yeah. It, so the first, first one is just, it's, it's just a ping. So the, that's why I didn't, I didn't, no, I didn't. Okay, yeah, <laughs> it, it's just a ping, exactly. So, so that, that really answers the security question, I think, because you're not, in, the, in this case, um, there's no payload. Yeah, yeah. you're not yeah. like actually accessing it. Yeah, you're not deploying anything. You're yeah. just you're just t informing someone, you're saying, hey, hey, there might be a change. <laughs> so yeah. go exactly. a little bit, so check a little faster check, than your normal source. reconciliation yeah. check. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. That's, that's what we want to release in a month from now. Cool. If you have no more questions, then thank you very much. And thanks for the Flux community too. <laughs> Tough flux, actually.